Hello again, future people, and welcome to the fifth installment of uh, Great Uncle John's weekly video log. This is February the 4th, so we're into the first week of February. We have January under our belts, and I'm still doing this, uh, which is surprising me. I usually don't have five weeks worth of uh, focus on a project, but... Uh, this is the new 2018 Great Uncle John. So uh, excuse me if I'm a little bit dopier and um, less coherent than usual today. I'm, I'll admit, a little bit hungover. I was um, had a wonderful couple of days with my son, Malcolm. Um, we, uh, we flew out to Nova Scotia. We, uh, when my mom passed a few years ago, she left my sister and I a home out there. So I fly out in the wintertime usually around this time of the year to uh, to check in the place and see how it's doing and it, it was doing well thankfully and thanks to uh, thanks to great neighbors that sort of keep an eye on the place uh, or a, a great neighbor I should say uh, keeps the road plowed so we get to even in the middle of February we can go out in the middle of uh, nowhere in Nova Scotia enjoy a few days at the house Malcolm uh, did some plumbing repair work around the place. He uh, tested the pressure tank and he replaced a water filter in the basement. Um, so that's great. I'm, I'm super pleased to have a, an apprenticing plumber in the family that can uh, can work in some of these projects for me. Um, and we also went to see Matt Minglewood and that's, uh, that's always great time. Uh, Matt for my money is the greatest uh, certainly the greatest maritime musician of the last 30 40 years uh, one of the greatest blues rock guitarists and performers in Canada if not the entire world um, I've, I've gone to see this is his 71st birthday birthday bash uh, February 3rd is his birthday and I was here last year he played the casino in Halifax for that one and another terrific show and this time he played Sydney, the Member Two Center in Sydney. And, uh, you know, hometown crowd, 71st birthday, I guess he's going to impress us with his best performance, and that he did. And I must say, after 30 years of, of seeing Matt Minglewood perform, I can say this is the best band I've ever heard him with. They're, they're young. I think they're friends or family members of people that he's worked with in the past, musicians in his band, and, uh, and they're quite young. And his lead guitarist, um, I don't even know if he's out of his teens yet, but uh, he's super. He can match uh, Matt lick for lick, and uh, the bass player absolutely mesmerizing to to watch and listen to. Anyway, very tight sound, and uh, his he's got a new album out, Fly Like Desperado. So if you like sort of rock, blues, country, southern rock kind of sound, uh, you'll love Matt. Go pick it up. And uh, yeah, I had a, as usual, had a mat show. I had one or two, too many beers. And uh, today my old body is feeling it. I, I can't do that very often, but you know what? It's worth it to have an enjoyable night like that with my son. It's, uh, it's priceless. So uh, let's start right off with the Trump stuff. So there's something called the Noons memo that everyone got uh, terribly excited about. This Noons guy, I guess, is a Republican congressman on the Senate intelligence committee or no it's the, Cong the congressional intelligence committee i guess or maybe he's a senator i don't know anyway he's uh, he's on an intelligence committee investigating trump and released a, a memo that had american media all worked up and the memo was apparently supposed to undermine the credibility of the fbi by showing they had political bias and not only sort of giving one side of the story emitting lots of facts and when it was finally released on friday i don't think it will have a huge impact on on the train that's uh, bearing down on Trump. Um, I don't see why it would even, I mean, if I was under criminal investigation, if I started bad-mouthing the police and getting 30% of the people to believe that uh, they were after me in a witch hunt, I still don't think it would affect the outcome of the investigation or the trial. It's not a popularity contest. Uh, so anyway, we'll continue to watch that, of course. We have no choice. Um, in, in the weather, you know, it's been actually a pretty mild week. Uh, we had one really cold night and a dump of snow last night, but it's been, I would say, a typical uh, January, February weather, uh, you know, around minus five or so. 
Uh, just scanning through the headlines here. What else happened this week? Uh, oh, I know a big thing that happened this week. I went to see the sanctified arm of St. Francis. Um, it's doing a cross-country tour since the beginning of January. And it, it's, as, as described, the forearm of St. Francis, which uh, is venerated by Catholics. It's St. Francis never decomposed, apparently. He died in the 1500s sometime in a ship's voyage, and the guy just would not decompose. And um, over the years, it's, it's quite fascinating. It's, if you look him up on Wikipedia, St. Francis of Xavier. Uh, and over the years, uh, he was, you know, in a silver coffin kind of thing in, in Rome. And I think this arm that I went to see was detached from his body quite early on to, to be a separate uh, relic to venerate. But uh, every once in a while, you know, every 50 years or so, they'd pop open the, the casket and record that uh, he looked and smelled wonderful. And he's a little desiccated now. But, uh, you know, he's still there. That hand is still there. I know some people find it macabre, but... I don't know. I went to see the Bog Bodies exhibit as well, and um, I, I don't. I don't find it macabre. And if, when, when I die, if this question comes up, when I die, I wouldn't mind being exhibited uh, in museums around the world. I think that would be kind of a cool way for my body to spend its uh, its existence after my soul departs. Uh, and yeah, in other news, um, let me see. They removed the Storm Cornwallis statue from Halifax. He was. Uh, a British general in the 1740s who, or 50s who had a bounty on the scalps of uh, native people and uh, that's kind of a hurtful thing to have a statue of a dude like that up. I think he should be in a museum with uh, contextual information around it, not out uh, in a place of honor. Carolyn Mulrooney might be running or she is running for the PC leadership uh, vacated by Patrick Brown. So anyway, I don't have much else to say. I'm recovering. So. Uh, thanks for listening, and we'll see you hopefully next week.